Alright folks, we're at the top of the hour. Y'all ready to get started? Let's do it. Alright. I am super excited to be here to demo one of our newest courses, the SOC 100 course. And before I joined OffSec, I worked in a security operations center. I started off as a tech. I worked my way up to a lead security analyst. And I have to say, my professional opinion is that the SOC 100 course and the entire fundamental series is fantastic. If you are right now trying to break into information security, this course will help you build the foundation upon which you will need to be successful in the industry and ace those brutal technical interviews. Anyone else bomb a technical interview or is this just me? Can I get an F in chat from anyone who's bombed a technical interview at some point over your career? I got a 10 second delay here, folks, but I'm starting to see them roll in. So if you're currently working in or tangential to information security and feeling that imposter syndrome, which we all have felt at one point or another in our career, these courses will help fill in any gaps in your knowledge base and build your confidence. What I really love about the SOC 100 course is how fun and engaging it is to learn and work through. There are a lot of hands-on demos throughout the course in which you will need to demonstrate competency of the subject matter, which for me felt like I was playing a capture the flag game and I love capture the flag games. I couldn't get enough of them when I was first getting started. So with that, let's jump into our SOC 100 demo today by placing you in the role of a tech hired to update customer documentation and troubleshoot networking issues. Folks, here is the scenario that we find ourselves in today. The customer has misplaced the IP address of their web server. Folks, help me out here. How are we going to help the customer find their misplaced IP address? Any ideas? Any ideas? Here we are in our environment. Shy one beast, you can find these labs in the SOC 100 series. Ping it, okay, let's try pinging it. Do you wanna ping the IP address or www.shimmervault.com? Let's give it a try. And that's what I love about these labs is you can try almost anything. See what works, what doesn't. I'm always surprised when I find a new way to accomplish something. Oh, wow. All right, folks. Well, the request timed out, but do you see what I see? This looks like it could be our IP address. And one way that we could alternatively just double check it would help if we spelled shimmer vault right and with an ns lookup command there we have it folks not quite sure how to use ns lookup let's just say in a windows command prompt you can always use a slash and a question mark to bring up the help menu but we've got our first answer so we'll take that we'll put it in our lms and boom one and done. Let's move along. All right, folks. Question number two. The customer does not know the computer name. Identify the computer name of the Windows machine. Any ideas? Any ideas of how we are going to identify the name of the Windows machine? All right, let's try some of these out. Why not? All right, I see NS lookup of the IP address. Doesn't seem to be what we're looking for. Ping it, ping it with a, a switch. Give it a try, why not? 
I am always down to try something new. Oop, would help if we have the IP right though. Doesn't seem to be working. A hostname command? All right, let's give it a try. Actually, we don't need that IP address, do we? Yep, you are right. There is the computer name that we need. So we'll provide that to our client, and they will hopefully be happy with our answer. And they are, and we can move right along. For this specifically, they're, they're just looking for the name of, oops, the computer system that we're working on, which is WinNetPrac. All right. Number three. Employees share files and messages through a shared resource. Customers have not been able to connect this machine to a shared resource. Create a remote share called quest underscore share to the H drive to find the flag. All right, folks. Let's take a look and see what shares that we do have. I'm, I'm kind of curious, and we can do this with a net share command. And we could see here that we have a C drive. That's our default share. We have a remote IPC drive. We have a remote admin drive. And we have a quest share drive that's on C, our internal quest share. So folks, do you see the problem here? All right. Exactly. It's the customers who have not been able to connect. All right. So I see a net share command in the audience. Thank you for that. Let's say we didn't know quite how to use net share. We can use our help switch to get the syntax that we need. Here we see the syntax with a couple different options that we could use. But we want to create a new share, right? Not just share the share that we have, but create a new one. But you're right, we can use net. That's pretty versatile, and we can see all of the options that we have here with net. And let's say the answer is in one of these folks. Which one do you think that I should use to create a new share? I like use. Yeah, let's go with use. So we can use net use, and we're going to use our help option. And we are going to see how the syntax needs to be in order for us to run this command. So here we have net use followed by device name, two backslashes, the computer name, and then the share name. So let's try that. And folks, there's a couple different ways that we could do this. There's no right or wrong way. There's just the way that you're familiar with and the way that you aren't yet. So let's use our net use command. We're going to add this to the H drive. And per the syntax, we need two backslashes. And we're going to use the IP address of our virtual machine, which is 192.168.167.63. And then we need to add our share name. And per our client, they want us to use quest underscore share. And we see here that the command was successfully completed. That's a good sign. Let's say I wanted to move along to the H drive and take a look 
and see if it has been created successfully. How would you change into the H drive from here? That's right, green frequency. You nailed it. Nailed it. All right, just simple H and a colon. And now we are in the H drive. And I don't know about you folks, when I first started, I was much more familiar with a Linux operating system than I was a Windows command prompt. I know in Linux, to look inside a directory, it's an LS command for list. In a Windows environment, how do we look to see what's in the directory? That's exactly right. Y'all nailed it. Simple dir command, short for directory. And there we go, folks. We have our flag. So again, in Linux, we would use a cat command to read what's inside of a file. But on a Windows command prompt, what command would we use to read what is in our text file? Type fantasy. So Hale, I probably mispronounced your handle, I'm very sorry, but you are absolutely correct. We will use a type command and in case you didn't know, now you know, tab autocomplete is your best friend. There we go, folks. We've got our flag and our client needs help with the wrap problem in the seller. Fun fact, you might not have known that before, but now you do. So we'll take our flag and we will provide it to our client and we will move on because now it is time folks for number four number four the customer is having a tough time starting the end serve service the client is asking us to start the end serve service to get the flag all right folks how do we check on a service in a Windows command prompt. Oops, I keep going back there. What I mean is to go here. How would we check on the service? I know this client is very needy, and if you work with clients, you will you will know clients are very needy. All right, first I'm gonna go back to my C drive. I see an SC command. I like that. I'm familiar with that. I'm sure we could use nut start as well. Let's take a look at what our SC options are and we'll again use our option flag or rather our help flag. And when you hear folks in the industry say, read the manual, this is what they mean. It is so helpful. We have here a description that SC is a command line program used for communicating with the service control manager and services, it gives us some usage instructions. I see here we need a command, but I'm not really quite sure what command to use. Any idea what command we would use to start the service? Anything jump out at you? Yeah, I like start. But before we use start, I'm going to use query because I'm curious, what is the status of this service right now? So let's check it out. We'll use our SC query and our service name is nserve. I may be mispronouncing it. If I am, folks, I'm very sorry. <laughs> All right. I see that it is stopped. And as you had aptly noted, we're going to want to use the SC start in order to start it. And I see that the start is pending, but we may want to, again, needy client, just double check that it's up and running. I'm just pressing the up key to go to our previous command of query. And folks, it is now running. Lastly, we got to collect our flag, which is going to be in the documents directory. All right, folks, how do we get to our documents directory? Any ideas? I'm 
keep in mind, I'm just a simple tech. I'm just getting started. A lot of these things are a little over my head. CD documents. Okay. Yeah, I, you know, CD is how we do change directories. And I'm just going to use that to go back one directory. And let's see what's here. Maybe it is under offsoc. Yep, I was just showing off my directory changing skills because I know it's so impressive. But the answer was actually right here all along. And sometimes, folks, it is. So we will change directories into documents and we'll use our directory command to see what's in here and we see our flag. All right, folks, let's grab our flag and move along to our next challenge. E and serve service is running. It is now, folks. Thanks to you. And there we go. All right. Now is when the fun starts. The client is asking us to connect to the machine using RDP and that the flag that they need is on the desktop background picture. So pull up our trusty terminal and when you RDP into an environment a Windows environment specifically is there a command that you like to use our desktop yeah absolutely X free RDP yeah honestly those are both great options I've used both of them I haven't used Ramina before, but let's use our desktop. And I'm going to use a G for geometry and 70% because I only want to see the, not the full size of the screen, but 70% of it because otherwise it's going to be hard to see our flag. And our virtual machine is on 192.168.167. Dot 63. So let's go there and uh oh. It doesn't look like we're able to RDP into this environment. Now, I'm going to give you a little hint. There's something that we need to do in order to RDP into this environment. Any ideas what where the problem is? And just keep in mind, in this learning unit, in this topic, we have a couple of different learning units. You will find them here. That is the clue I will give you. Honeychip says port. Rasty says enable remote access for RDP. Green frequency says several service not running, port not open. All right, so let's let's say there's something blocking the port. What could that be that's blocking the port that we need to access the RDP? Folks, any idea? Is 3389 even listening? Firewall, that's right, folks. All right, so yes, we do have a firewall up and running, and we are going to need to disable that. So how... Do we turn off the firewall? Any ideas? Oh, wow. Banatonic, you nailed it. I'm going to copy and paste that directly. Because that is exactly what we need to do. Fantasy Sisul says, I just Google how to do it. I've got to tell you, Google's your best friend. If there's ever a time where you're not quite sure what to do, my first instinct is to Google it. All right, folks, our firewall is now down. Very cool. Let's give our RDP command 
one more go and see if we can get on the box. Oh, this is a good sign. All right. So I happen to be the tech in charge, and I happen to know that the credentials are offsec, offsec. And we are on the server, folks. Do you see the flag? Ange 31D says a little bit on the offensive side. I've got to tell you, and I'm sure you've heard this before, a good offense is a good defense. And therefore, the transitive property must be true that a good defense is a good offense. And that's what I love about information security. It's like looking at two sides of the same coin. And if you know offense and defense, well, you've got the full picture. So we have the flag that our client needs. So I'm just going to grab that. And boom, our client is happy and we are Moving along. The customer informed you that an environment variable needs to be ingested. Check the environment variables for the flag. All right, folks. Yeah, this this client loves their flags, Thanatonic. And I, you know, I like flags too, so I kind of get it. Folks, how are we going to check the environment variables? Any ideas? And 31D says set. And I see a good point in chat. Nefarious 010 says, oh crap. Yeah, we're blue teamers. Don't disable the entire firewall. I completely agree with you. And uh, if this was a real live scenario, I would only provision the access that's necessary to accomplish the task. Because defense in depth and least privilege is and are very important principles to defense. But since this, we're in some sandbox environment, it's fine for the time being, but you, your head's in the right place. I see some, some folks suggesting set. I like that. Why don't we give that a try? All right, so here we see all of our environmental variables and the client has told us that the flag will be amongst them. Does anybody see the flag? Uh, Anasi says, Alex, are you that intern? Luckily, brother, today I am not, but any other day, I could be. Folks, you see the flag anywhere? Yeah, you do? What's the environment variable it's stored under? Help me out here. The eyes aren't what they used to be. Oh, nailed it. Between driver and home, it's under flag. So we'll pull that. And we will put it right here, folks. We only have two more, but this last one might take us some time. So with that, our next challenge is this device might be associated with an internal network on another interface. Find the IP address of the other interface and provide the IP address as the answer. 
folks. How are we going to do this? Any ideas? Thanatonic, you were nailing this. If you're on a Windows environment, you can use IP config. But if you happen to be on a Linux environment, what would this command be? Anyone know? If config, yeah. I love when the commands are the same or similar. If config and ip config can be a little tricky though. I candidly will usually try the wrong command first. All right, folks, do you see the IP address that we're looking for? I agree, and 31D, the chat is alive chat you've been awesome i could not have asked for a better chat and i super appreciate it because folks this is no joke my first time streaming it's been a lot of fun all right folks this last challenge i'm gonna preface it is gonna be a little tricky The customer needs a text file located within a zip file. Find the zip file located on the desktop. Use the skills that you learned in this topic to unzip this file and retrieve the flag inside. All right, folks. Well, I already saw the zip flag. However, when I try to open it, I get an error message that Windows cannot open the folder. Access is denied. Folks, any idea for how we are going to unzip this zipped file? <laughs> Use a real app. <laughs> uh, okay. Not the solution I was looking for. Check file permissions. Okay. I We got, folks, we got half an hour. We can go down some rabbit holes here. How would you like to check file permissions? Well, folks, if, if we don't have ownership of the file, we can't unzip it, can we? G Nunas eighty eight suggests a PowerShell command and Rasty says right click it and check the properties. I mean why not? Folks, let's do it. Let's see what we got here. All right. I see that you must have read permissions to view the properties of this object. Click continue to attempt the operation with administrative privileges. Folks, should I try it? Got a 10 second delay here. Hammer it. Yes. Okay. Let's give it a try. Why not? All right. I see that we have an allow for system administrators and for administrator of which we are none of those all right folks what now <laughs> add everyone full control nefarious 10 you really are nefarious i love it uh select a principal
log in as admin. We don't have the admin login yet, but there is another way to grab this file. Do you guys hear my assistant technician in the background? Copy it to your location you own. And 31, I like that option. Yes, Shy One Beast, that is a cat, but it is also my assistant tech. She just came by to wish you all a happy Friday. All right, folks, so how I like that option, copy it to a location you own. Do you have any preferences when it comes to copying? And I'll, I'll give you a clue. My assistant here is, is, is providing you with a clue as to what we need to do. Any ideas how we are going to copy this file to a location that we can access? <laughs> Why not both.jpg? <laughs> I love it. Create a temp folder in the C root and put it there. Copy it to public desktop, meow at it. All of these are great options. Let's give some of these a try. I'm kind of curious if we can if we can do it that way. Copy it to a public desktop. Let's just say this. Oops. Not that. But this is where we want to copy it to. Because we have access here to unzip it. But how would we get this zipped file from our Windows environment to our Kali environment. SMB, okay, that could work. Not quite the solution I had in mind, but we could absolutely try it. My assistant technician is telling me to give you a clue, and that clue is the solution I had in mind has what they are in the name. <laughs> yep, that's right. Netcat, okay. So if we want to set up a netcat listener which is where we are going to start on this endeavor first thing that we need to do is read the manual because i am just a simple tech i don't really know what i'm doing here folks and if you want to view the manual what command would we put before it i love all of these creative options the creativity in this chat is just overwhelming. Okay, folks, we have our general commands manual here. We can see that netcat is the TCP IP Swiss Army knife. We have a synopsis that provides us with the syntax that they want us to use, a nice little description. And if you have some time, you should read it. But Let's take a look at our options because we are going to need a couple of these. And the first option that we're going to use is our L option for listen mode to listen for inbound connect since we need to set up the reverse listener. We need the N option because we're doing numeric only IP addresses with no DNS. We're going to need the V option for verbose. Love adding verbosity to my commands, especially when something isn't working out. It's really nice to have the command itself telling you 
what it likes or doesn't like. And the last option that we are going to need is P for a local port number. I see a question here from Zeker4368. Are you going to be doing the same type of talk on SOC 200? Yes. In fact, next week, I will be streaming one of the demonstrations from the SOC 200 course. It is going to be a good time. I hope to see you there. But let us set up our listener because I think we have the information that we need here. So we'll use sudo. We're going to need sudo privileges. Netcat. We're going to set up our options with LNVP again. Listen mode, numeric only, verbose, and port. And we're going to set it up on port 80. And when it comes over, we are going to want it to be named with the same naming convention. It's going to make our lives a heck of a lot easier. All right, folks. Boom. Oh, boy. I'm definitely going to get this password wrong. As you can hear, it's not Cali, which I'm sure is most of your Cali passwords. All right. So we have our listener set up. And the reason why, and you know, again, I, I have the benefit of knowing this, the reason why we're using Netcat in order to get the information that we need here, folks, is because within this topic, there is a learning unit that focuses on Netcat. So armed with that information, that is the tool that we are going to use to pull the zip flag that we need. So now, why don't we jump back over to our Windows environment? So chat, help me out here. First day as the tech intern, I really don't know what I'm doing. Actually, I have no clue. So I could really use some help here. If I wanted to use Netcat in a Windows environment, what would that command be? And while I wait for some some answers from chat, I see Shy One Beast says, "Will there be something for the web courses as well?" You betcha. That'll be coming up soon. Trademark. All right, folks. I need to use Netcat in my Windows environment, but I have no clue how to do that. Any ideas? I see Nefarious, why don't we give that a try? I mean, why not? Netcat, destination port, we're using 80, or no, destination IP. We're going to use our tunnel zero IP, which is 192.168.49.167. And what else did you have in there? This and the file name. Let's give it a try. See if it works. That's what I love about these environments. You know, if you have an idea, you can give it a try. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, you can try something else. Didn't like it. NC is not a recognized internal or external command. I did miss the port. Yeah, you're right. I did. But it doesn't it, it stopped it right at NC. It didn't like it. NC is not on the box. All right, folks, I'll give you a clue. Well, and that's the wonderful thing about this nefarious. There's probably hundreds of ways that you can go about doing this. I happen to know a handful of them. But there's so many that I haven't even discovered yet. And the wonder of working through these demos is if you have an idea, you could try it. And that's honestly just the best way to learn is just try new things, see what works, learn from the mistakes that you made or the successes that you achieve. You're right. NC is not a default binary in Windows. I do happen to know 
that it's NCAT. Unfortunately, I don't seem to see a help menu. All right. So I've got at least NCAT, I know, is what we're going to want to use here. Okay, okay. I like these ideas. Let's run with it. The only thing missing... Well, let's not give away any spoilers here, folks. Let's try this. NCAT... 192.168. Again, my tunnel zero is 49.167. We need the port. The port is 80. Thank you for that reminder. We need to use a caret designating that we want the information to go to this port. And we're going to use the file that we need, which is users slash offsec desktop and the file name all right folks let's see if that worked oh boy that is not the solution I had written down for myself but it may have worked let's take a look at what's on our directory and I see it all right folks I see our zip file, and it is in our Kali environment. What now? Nefarious says, as a blue teamer, I would be more concerned that Netcat was even on this machine. And I got to I gotta agree with you there. I would also be really concerned to see Netcat in my environment, provided that it's not something that my IT team was using for something routine that made sense, right? <laughs> Ange31 says, nah, it's fine. The house is on fire. Yeah, this is definitely that uh, this is fine meme. All right. Any idea how we now get the information inside this zip file? Folks, any ideas? The command I'm looking for. How would I get the information that's in the zip file, folks? Unzip. That's right. Let's give it a try. It didn't like the unzip command. I've never used Zcat before. I wonder if that's something that's on my box. Ah, okay. All right. Interesting. Identical to gun zip with a C option. Let's give it a try. Mr. Jirsch says, I literally never use Twitch. Are there other security CTF penetration testing type channels on here? We do a lot on our Twitch channel. We're going to be doing something new on OffSec Live on Fridays. Um, day or time might change, but as of right now, it's going to be Fridays at 5 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Central. There's going to be something new every week, so stay tuned. We're going to be doing Lots of cool stuff. Zcat will cat the content. Let's give that a try. Just like this. Mr. Jirsch says, are you going to do things beyond 100 level content? Yes, we will. Next week, next Friday, same time, same place. I'm going to be doing a demo from the SOC 200 series, and it's going to be a good time. You don't want to miss it.
the 100 level content is great. The 200 level content is great. We've got something for everyone. So let's give this a try. Didn't like it. Ange31 says, what's the difference between 100 and 200? Well, the difference between 100 and 200 is simply the 200 stuff is slightly more advanced and builds on the concepts that we learn at the 100 level. I wonder if this is just an issue of permission since this seems to be in red. Why don't we try seeing if we can change the permissions by adding an X? And now it's in green. I wonder if we can unzip it now. Didn't like it. End of file. I wonder if it's how we have it sent over. Let's remove this and start again. Just take it one step back. Still got to remove the zip flag. That zip. Okay, good, it's gone. All right, so one thing that I think that we are missing here, folks, um, first and foremost, I'm gonna reset up our listener, go back a couple commands. We have quite a couple that we have run. I think we're really close here. Might be that this makes a difference, maybe not. Here's our NCAT command. There's only one thing I think that we're missing here, folks. I don't want to spend too much time looking for a needle in a haystack. The send only option. Taking a look at my command, making sure that I have my IP address correct, which I do. The port and where it is, let's give that a try. Still didn't like it. So we have the zip file, we just can't open it. How frustrating is that? Hmm. Any ideas? File it like this? It's empty. So perhaps it's just not coming across correctly. Now this is genuinely puzzling, folks. I've done this earlier, and it was working fine for me. So I'm just going to remove this one more time and try again. So it is no longer here. Let me see if I put my command in wrong. Huh. Now this is genuinely curious because this is exactly how I was able to previously accomplish this task. I'm going to try this one more time. I think perhaps that, you know, it's just being finicky with me. At least that's the hope. Double checking the commands one last time that I have here in my notes, because this looks good to me, folks. I wish I had a help menu on my Windows environment, that would surely be helpful, wouldn't it? 
Unfortunately, when we ran our netcat with the help switch, it didn't seem to have anything on the system. But this is what I have in my notes, and when I used this previously, this worked for me. But that's okay, folks. We stay cool under pressure. That's all part of the job, working in information security. Let's give this one more try. Because I know that we are able, it's connecting. We have the zip flag zip file on our Kali Linux environment. Let's try adding execute privileges to our zip flag.zip file. And let's try unzipping it one last time. Did not like it. Can't we get help in Windows with NCAT H? Let's give it a try. I'm all for giving it a try. And you nailed it. There is our help menu. All right, let's see what we use. The syntax it wants NCAT, followed by options, followed by host name, followed by port. So the options that we used here was send only, only send data, ignoring received. So that looks good. And then we had, just going back to the syntax that it wants, the host name, which was our Kali environment, and the port, which was 80. So that all looked good to me. I am genuinely stumped. Chat, any ideas here? Navigate to the desktop and try it from there. Uh, I see what you are saying. Why don't we give that a try? I like that. So perhaps why it's not being sent, and this is, I suspect you are right here, is that where are we? I don't see the right document because we are in documents, not on the desktop. Points for a Nazi for that one. I think you were right, sir. There's our zip flag. Let's try our command one last time. Perhaps that is why it was not sending anything over. It received the connection but didn't actively refused it. You know, folks, it would probably help if we set up our listener first, huh? Let's give this one more try. Cause I do believe this is the right solution now that we're in the right place. And sometimes it's just being at the right place at the right time. And if you're not, folks, that could be a problem. All right. So now we're here. Let's use type and see Did not like that. But what's unzip? Did not like that either. Hmm. Genuinely stumped here. You know what? Maybe it's because we put the full path and we didn't need to. I'm willing to give that a try. I curiously do love being stumped because it makes you try harder to find the solution. And that's what we're all about here, folks. We are all about trying harder. And there's no better feeling than being stuck on something and then figuring it out. Before I run this,
got another technician chatting me, asking me to try a directory command. Oh boy. Oh, oh boy. All right, folks. I think I found the problem. Our client was mistaken, and there doesn't appear to be anything inside this zip flag.zip file. I see zero bytes. Curious and curiouser. Restart the lab, should we? Yeah, let's give it a let's give it a try, folks. It could just be a false start. So why don't we revert our lab environment and let's give it one more try. We've got another four minutes, and I don't mind running over to get this completed. Yeah, folks, I appreciate all of the help in chat. Super helpful. I have been trying to keep up with chat as I have attempted to troubleshoot this issue. But I am not, admittedly, the great greatest multitasker. I'm pretty decent. All right, folks, but we don't give up, do we? Here at Offensive Security, we try harder. So we're going to give this one more try because I am not content to end our stream here today without successfully getting this zip flag for my client because they will be pissed. And I really like keeping my job, folks. So we're going to give this one more try. Our box is back up and running, although I think we're probably going to have to re-SSH into that environment. So we'll do that first and foremost. We are back in. Also going to want to find where our file is located. It's on our desktop environment. Oop. And there it is, folks. All right, so first things first, I'm curious. I see now here. There's 152 bytes in our zip flag dot zip. So that does appear to have been the problem. Previously, I was looking at zero bytes. Now I'm looking at 152. But first, we have to set up our Netcat listener in our Kali environment. And then we need to set up our netcat command on our Windows environment with the IP of our tunnel zero, which is 40, oop, gonna need a dot there, 49.167, port is 80 that we have chosen. And let's use the full path. If not, we can just try the zip file by itself. But that's how I have it in my notes, folks, so that's how I am going to do it. Up and running. Send it over. See what we got here. Oh boy, that is a sight for sore eyes. Oh, wow. I am so incredibly relieved. I was for a second there, folks. I was like, I'm not going to be able to get the flag for this client. I am going to get fired. But with everyone's help here in chat, we were able to try harder. 
and get our final flag. That, my folks, is what we call the bling bling. Shout out to Siren. Siren, I told you I'd do this. The single coolest person on the planet. Every time I say bling bling, I always think Siren. Woo! Oh my god. I was sweating there for a minute, folks. Wow. Y'all, we did it. We got the flags, which means that it is time to head to the outro. Oh, what a relief. But to be candid with you, from my experience working in the sock, there were times like this where you're just sweating bullets and you're just like, oh my goodness, am I going to be able to do the thing that I'm being asked to do? Well, let me tell you, folks, if you are willing to double down on your efforts and try harder, You'd be surprised by what you could do. Y'all, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed your demo of the SOC 100 course. Because I sure did. Join me next week, folks. We are going to demo the SOC 200 course i'm going to be doing demoing a module in which we have a seam environment set up we are going to see an attack we'll not really see it but the attack will happen we will know it's being done and then we will find indicators of that attack and the indicators of compromise live next week for Offsec Live. Be there or be square. Friends, do you want to hear this song once or twice? Because I'm open. This song is such a banger, I would listen to it all night. Thrice? Not an option. Once or twice. Forever? You know what they say, folks. Birds of a feather flock together. I love all these attempts in chat to try to get me to play it three times. <laughs> Y'all really know how to speak my language.
and them fit take a rest of set or run the game Let me see yeah. Jesse Jim run the wild west OSCP and OSCE OSWP and OSWA A set up on the light lion from Serengeti And I turn them fire while shit in the confetti When you have come to the system with no integrity And you need to give a test, call up set you see Best defense and what defense set they won't chop them see I love to see so many people sticking around just for the song. This really is a banger. Any fun weekend plans, y'all? <laughs> Bad at everything, really. I'm staying to see if the assistant tech comes back. Folks, that assistant tech is right here with me. Let me see if I can get a, a word from her. Y'all hear that? What do you think, Tech? Y'all hear that? My assistant tech wishes you a really wonderful weekend. That's all for now, folks. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Wish everyone a wonderful and really relaxing weekend. Join us next time. Until then, have a wonderful day.